Well, when I was a little boy sitting on my mama's knee, she said, oh, son, let me tell you about that bad stag of me. Going to Mississippi in 64, you knew you could be arrested, you knew you could be killed, you knew you could be injured. And so it's not something that you did lightly, not something you did because it was going to be fun. Because it was definitely definitely not going to be fun. But there was this feeling inside of me that that was just something I had to do. Before I went to Mississippi, I was living in New York. I was um, teaching guitar and banjo. At that time in my life, I was, uh, you know, I was a folk singer, and I had been involved in the movement, uh, singing at rallies and hoot nannies and and uh, fundraising events in New York for SNCC. You know, I wasn't big for going on demonstrations or getting thrown in jail and this, that, and the other, but music was something was a gift that I had, that that I that I had to offer. Billy Lyons, I grew up in the black church. My father was a uh, my father was a Methodist minister, and was a very good preacher. I loved to hear my father preach because of his use of uh, his use of language, and especially the rhythm and the, the 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 music of the language. I understood the black church and the culture of the black church, so that when I went to Mississippi and would lead singing at mass meetings in church. It was a very, very familiar environment. My job was to get people to start singing and to create that sense of community through people joined together in song. That block in there is all freedom songs. Those are, those are songs that I would have sung uh, in Mississippi in 64. The most vivid memory that I have from, from that summer and singing was a night in Gulfport, Mississippi. Hot in Mississippi, especially hot and humid on the Gulf. And uh, we weren't in a church that night. I don't know where we were. I don't remember where we were. But the place was full, and so it was even hotter than it would have been normally. And I remember starting off on, on, on Wade in the Water. Wade in the water. Wait in the water, children, wait in the water. God's going to trouble the water. And of course, back in those days, I played guitar. Uh, and my voice was, that was 50 years ago, my voice was a lot better than it is now. Um, but it was a kind of song where I would sing Wade. And the whole congregation would come in on, in the water. And there was just this immediate electricity. And one of the things that, 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 that came through in the singing that night was how much pain there was in the singing. Um, and it was as if, you know, the centuries of pain going back to slavery, they all released that night. Near the end, I would start singing songs about, about the possibility of death. One kind favor I'll ask of you. One kind favor I'll ask of you. One kind favor I'll ask of you. Please see that my grave is kept clean. I mean, that's a stark song. But that was the reality in Mississippi in 1964. You know, you'd lead singing for 30 minutes, an hour, depending on the situation you were in or what have you. But at a certain point, the people were present. They were there. They were ready. Then at that point, the organizers got up and began to talk. Okay. Tomorrow, how many want to go to vote? We're going to march to the courthouse. We're going to do this or this, that, and the other. But that's when the organizing would start. But the music, the music produced the energy. The music created the community. And the music fought the fear. Wait. Water children now we 
I basically traveled around the state, wherever we were, it was thought we were needed. Go into a town and you know, you don't know where you're going to stay that night. And so somebody will put you up and if not, I certainly spent nights sleeping on the back seat of the car. For those looking back, it, it seems romantic. It was not romantic at all. There was nothing romantic about it. It was, it was, it was difficult. There was a rule that summer which uh, I broke often. The rule was you were not supposed to drive at night. And we did. And so when you're driving along Highway 61 or Highway 51 in Mississippi at night, and suddenly there are car lights behind you. And then when that car pulls alongside you, you don't know whether or not there's going to be a shotgun barrel sticking out of the window or you know what. But in the song in the world made any difference in that moment. Having, you know, the experiences that I had in 64, you know, in Mississippi has certainly given me the ability to affirm my values even when my life is threatened. Um, that if somebody can threaten your life and you give up your values, then they own you. They own your soul. And you can't let somebody own your soul. Children now wait.